Hey guys, so what I want to do today is put out a video and show you how I am building an E85 tune with the Holly Terminator X for my Fox body. And this information is out there. I've watched it on several people's videos. May many of these guys are into the GM stuff, which is why I'm basically just showing you what I've learned from them and basically carrying it over to work for the Fox body because it's really all relatively the same but so if you're one of the if, if you want to run e85 or some sort of flex fuel and you're not really sure how to and you got a fox body you got the holly terminator x it's actually very very simple um and i'm going through it right now to to hook up the entire system to my car so mainly first thing you want to have is an adequate fuel system because e85 does take a lot more um fuel inside the engine it's about 30 percent more so you want to make sure your fuel pump is adequate. You know, you might have to go with bigger fuel lines and then also your injectors. Um, I'm running a 60 pound injector on my um, 331 stroker with a 76 millimeter turbo. I could probably go to an 80, but in reality, I might just crank the fuel pressure up and uh, roll with the 60s. They should be good for what I'm trying to do. I'm not really trying to go crazy power, so uh, we'll, we'll be okay. we should be okay. But anyway... First thing you want to do, install a flex fuel sensor in the car. Now, what flex fuel sensor do you want to buy? So I bought, which I'll link it in the description, it's a GM flex fuel sensor, and Sloppy Mechanics sells a harness that bolt that that um connects directly into the power tap on the Holly harness, and then you can go ahead and just wire your flex fuel sensor to that, your your input wire. So Really simple. You'll see it when I install it on a later video. But but anyway, step one, install your flex fuel sensor. After that, let's go ahead and dive into the software. And I'll show you how easy this really is. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up um, the file that's in the car right now. And so... Basically, this fuel table, this is the base fuel table. It's already set. I'm not going to touch it, right? This is the gas table. This is the target air fuel ratios. It's relatively conservative. As you can see, as I start to get up to 5,000 RPM, it richens the car up a little bit. Pretty conservative, makes decent power, and it's worked for us the whole time. All right, in here, we're not going to change anything. If you notice right here, it says gasoline. If you switch this to E85 as your fuel type, when you target your AFRs, you have to set these to what they would basically convert to for E85. The wideband reads lambda, so and then it pretty much converts it over. So on a gas table, it'll say, okay, this is 12.1. But if you switch that to E85, that 12.1 is not going to be the same as it is on the gas table because it's going to convert the lambda for E85, and you're going to be way too lean and either burn up a head gasket or do more worse damage. But so this entire table I'm going to build, or this entire setup I'm going to build off the gas table. Spark table, this is more than likely going to change, especially under E85. The numbers will probably go up. I actually think I've already bumped them up maybe a few. Let me see. Yeah, a couple. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you what we're going to do with this. So first thing, really what we're going to do is set up our flex fuel sensor. So we're going to go into inputs and outputs. It's going to be an input. We're going to enable this one. It is a digital speed frequency. All right, we can name it flex fuel sensor. And then we have to configure it. The nice thing about Holly is they already have GM flex fuel in it. So just click that back now we have to pin it so we go into our inputs it's right here just make sure it corresponds with the input that you set it up with so for demonstration purposes input number two when i go to wire that flex fuel sensor i'm going to use wire for input number two whatever white and whatever color stripe that is all right so now the flex fuel sensor that we wired up and hooked up is pinned and ready to go inside of our terminator x it's going to work as long as it's set up right but so now what we're going to do is go to add individual config 
and we're going to add an advanced table. All right, it's going to pop up up here. So what we're going to do first, we're going to enable the first table. We need to add a fuel multiplier. And the reason why we need to do that is because, as we stated earlier, E85, you need about 30% more fuel. So fuel flow multiplier, our x-axis is going to be that flex fuel sensor, which is there because we pinned it. So now if you look down here, here's our ethanol content, right? Zero to 100. So on a Holly sponsored video, you know, they said recommend about 37% at 100%. And then we'll just go ahead and fill it from zero all the way up to the top. And this is mainly just a good place to start, right? I'm pretty sure it's all relative. I think this will work. And so... If you look, say we do get straight E85, which would, you know, fall right in here, it'll give us about 30% more fuel. So as the flex fuel sensor either reads more or less ethanol content, it will either add more or maybe a little less fuel into what's already in the gas table. So if we go back to gas, right, and there's almost no ethanol in it, we're not really multiplying anything. So, and what you can do too, what I've seen in videos is, you know, you figure if gas contains up to 7%, here you have what, 2.5%, you can offset this, you know, say um, offset, say we take 2 out just to be, you know, on the conservative side, so that this way if you do get to the point where, you know, you just have to throw straight gas back in it, you're still roughly around your 30% ethanol content up at, you know, the E85 level. But then it's not adding anything at all to the base table, really, at all. All right, so that's step one, really. Fuel flow or fuel flow multiplier. Next thing we're going to do, the next two things we're going to do, actually, the first one's going to be a timing offset. The reason why we're doing that is because if you notice in this spark table, Right, ethanol takes more timing than gasoline. Um, makes you know you can run more timing, but from what everything that I've researched and seen, it usually needs more timing. So these these timing numbers are a little higher than they would be on gas. And so when we create this offset, right in table two, timing offset, we'll go back to flex fuel sensor. So now we have our ethanol content at the bottom again. And so pretty much right around this like E40 line, E47 is really where we're going to start to pull some timing out. So pretty much just to be on the conservative side, we'll pull 8 degrees out if there's no ethanol at all. And then we'll just go ahead and fill this right in here. So as our ethanol content goes down, the timing goes down. So if we have, you know, straight back to gas say we're hovering around this between e0 and e10 range right it's minus six seven degrees if we look at our timing table right say we're running 30 degrees at you know na or you know in full vacuum and then say you know we're running 30 degrees say we do get up into boost a couple pounds you know we're running 24 which is you know roughly what i was running at you know say what eight ten pounds whatever So now your fuel flow multiplier is set, your timing offset is set, and I've seen in a sloppy mechanics video, and, then, and he is phenomenal. He, he is a wealth of knowledge. I've learned a lot from him. He actually sets this to boost pressure. Um, and he sets basically to this to one. So... Pretty much, it won't pull any timing as as long as you're as long as you're not in boost, it won't pull timing. But I mean, you can do it or not. I don't plan on really running gas ever in this car again, so I'm just going to pull it out completely. But it's a really it's it's a good safety measure. I'd say if you street drive the car a lot, you know, they claim the claim is that on this on the if you're just street driving it and cruising it, the additional timing is not really going to hurt anything. But 
Um, I'd rather just have it pull timing everywhere. If, uh, you know, as I go through, I can, you can always adjust this. Maybe, you know, you only have timing in up top, so maybe it is worth it to throw this on. And like I said, those guys know more than me, so. Anyway, the last table we're going to do, I like to do, from what I've read and researched, a 2D table for this one, but you can do it in a 1D table, is a target AFR offset. And the reason for this is because with your, and again, we're going flex fuel sensor for the x-axis. And so the reason for this is with your ethanol content being higher, you can usually run a, we might, so we might be leaning up some of these AFRs. I've seen it to where people, you know, these are up in the 12s up here, or, you know, and if you lean it out a good amount and then go back to gas, these numbers might be a little too lean if you, you know, really start partying up, you know, you're up in boost up and you're, you're back on gas. So all I would do, right, and I had to change this because it was at 999. So pretty much here is where we're in, you know, boost. So I'm just going to richen this up by one full point. And then I'll just go ahead and fill these columns. And so pretty much right here, if our ethanol content starts to go down, we're getting up into boost. And after we've dialed in our air fuel ratio we're a little bit leaner than we typically would be for gas for as far as afr this will throw that point back in it so like i said say you know say up around here this likes a 12.4 or a 12.5 this is in there to protect that if we're going back to gas where we're back down to our e10 it's going to richen that up should we get up into that boost level on gas that protection's there and so this is really the last of it um these three things outside of putting on that flex fuel sensor and pinning it we can fill this car with e85 now and give it a shot um, and this is actually exactly what i'm going to upload into my car and fire it up for the first time and so really all i'm just showing you is that this you know don't do not be intimidated by it you know do a little research set it up conservatively and then we can go from there you know I, this doesn't have to be negative eight maybe by the time i dial it in perfectly this has only got to be negative five or maybe it's got to be negative 10. same thing with your afrs the uh, 2d table that i built maybe this doesn't have to be negative one maybe it's a negative you know negative 0.5 or negative 0.2 or who knows um but mainly all i wanted to do was just Put this information out there to the Fox Body community because um, I know a lot of people have the desire to run Flex Fuel Sensor. There's a lot of people running the Terminator X. I've been lucky to be playing with this Terminator X for about a year now. I knew absolutely nothing about it when I started doing it, but I've learned a lot over the past year that I've had it. Plus, I'm never ending reading, researching, educating myself. And I really just want to share the knowledge with you that I've learned from watching some of these guys, from watching Slop Mechanics, from watching Joe Simpson. Um, Stevie Fast, a lot of these guys put out some great information and really I just want to, being that I have it, I just want to give it back to you guys who maybe don't or haven't seen these guys yet. So I uh, hope this helps you guys out. If you're confused by something, feel free to reach out. If I don't know the information, I have zero problem saying I don't know, but then researching it so I do know for next time. So anyway, guys, again, hope this helps. Just trying to help you guys out with the Holly Terminator and uh, help out the Fox Body community. So Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, take care, and we'll see you on the next one.